95, right, is, you know, kind of Fast and Furious, I think, is the first. Mm -hmm. I run 95, I think, is when the first Fast and Furious movie came out. That's right? probably and when people is, first heard their the yeah. blow off valve noise. I mean, <laughs> blow off valves, you know, and, and like turbo Hondas and so the turbo Honda market was just starting to come on, like in Southern California, mm -hmm. um, where guys were doing, you know, kits for Hondas, right? And uh, I'd still been doing Porsche stuff primarily. That's all I knew. Uh, primarily, there was no real big, you know, movement yet that uh, in uh, aftermarket, right? Aftermarket turbos. There were mm -hmm. a few guys who were doing them. HKS again, back being in Japan, and they had um, Garrett had manufacturing in Japan, they teamed up. So the, the performance leaders in Turbo at the time probably were the HKS-based units. So you were thinking, that's crazy that you were thinking of developing these blow-off valves before people were even really turboing their cars. I just saw, yeah, really simple, you know. That seems like real weird <laughs> forethought almost in a way. Yeah, like, I mean, it, Not it was, weird, but like it seems like, I don't know, it just seems like it kind of... Trying to, uh, uh, you know, develop product for the cars, the kits themselves. So the initial, my first business uh, started in 1985 with Porsche stuff, was that availability of parts was very low. Like, there, and turbochargers were almost difficult. Like, you were going to be able to get something that came off a diesel or something, you know, because mm -hmm. that's where most turbos in the United States were produced for, were for diesel applications, non automotive yeah so you know there were a few guys and turbine x would be one of those guys early on uh, bob keller he was you know started turbine and he was basically taken he was part of the garrett distribution uh scene at the time and would take various parts from turbochargers and basically create a more performance version of yeah. those turbos and so, so they uh, would modify yeah so he would take various parts that would fit better for not a diesel application but for a gasoline performance application so uh, you know, recognizing, again, limitation of parts was the primary one. The materials that were selected, I was kind of came from a materials background. So I'm like, man, why aren't these things made in stainless steel? You know, uh, you know, better quality, you know, uh, machined aluminum, everything was cast. And I'm like, you know, machined aluminum and anodized, you know, would be a nicer product. And, uh, you know, kind of on that basis is where I kind of moved forward. So yeah. in 93, that's when I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start developing the product at that point. And and when you were developing this product, were you, how much were you looking at what Porsche had to up to modify it and what HKS had? Or was it yeah. like, I'm just going to kind of start from scratch? Because I'd originally done a, produced a kit uh, with a partner of mine um, that he we did Porsches, right? So we saw a oh, Porsche application. And one of the main limitations on the original Porsche wastegate was the size of the actuator. So it was a very large actuator, but there was no real electronic boost control at the time. I mean, OEMs were using it on race cars, but in the aftermarket, HKS was one of the first. It was too big, right? So like, so one of the improvements was uh, basically make the can of the top of the wastegate smaller. Mm -hmm. So it had better boost control. Uh, that's kind of, you know, uh, well, again, just kind of recognizing things that would be, could be improved for current market, yeah. current day. So. It's just weird hearing all about this stuff then yeah. and how it's evolved to now is so crazy because oh, that's I'm sure what you system. saw <laughs> then and what you thought the future was going to be is completely different than... Oh, you're definitely starting what I did in 93, had no idea where the market was going. Like, I only saw my little niche market of uh, guys in Porsches, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah if, I, if I make, you know, a few of these a year and continue to make the other products I was making, that was fine. You know, it wasn't like I saw this this all of a sudden massive boom in the aftermarket that kind of was fueled by, again, back kind of the Fast and Furious, <laughs> the movies. It's surprising how much of a influence that had in the market. That's a, a huge funny domino effect. It is. like, But you would think, oh, it's just a movie. But reality is, is it caught on like in, in a big way in the U.S. in 95 and then on. I think it's burned into a lot of people's brains that like, initial like blow off valve sound mm -hmm. that you can hear in the movie and then when they open the hood and there's all the blue lines everywhere and like yep. you can you can see the plumbing of the blow off valves and stuff yeah. i think that's like a very and that came again back from the you know the japanese uh you know uh, hks and gradius of the day right that that whole you know very detailed mm -hmm. um uh, de engine com engine bays you know it was kind of that was the thing that people wanted but performance too it was still it was like the Honda was the new Chevy, a small block, right? And, well, even and, that first movie, like, they didn't include anything LS-based, really, or, like, no. anything 
Because at that point, almost nobody was doing anything with a with a V eight turbo wise that yeah. you know, in the market and but even turbo. like racing in that movie, there was no Corvette <laughs> racing, there <laughs> no. was no Camaro in that. It was just like all Japanese. All, which all Japanese is funny cars. to think back that yeah. they kind of skipped a whole side of the car market. It just wasn't really being applied. I mean, today you see it being applied very broadly. You know, all engines are going to see turbos today, but yeah. uh, not back back in the 90s. No, not so much. Yeah. Guys, thank you for tuning in to the Bogetti Clips YouTube channel. For the full podcast, check us out on Bogetti Studios YouTube and all your audio platforms. Also, hit that subscribe button to not miss out on any of the new Bogetti Clips coming up.